Hello and welcome to the Power Guys. Today we're going to talk about a pre-built lithium iron phosphate battery. It's by Orient Power and it's a 48 volt 100 amp hour battery. We'll show you what is in the box, open it up, and just give you a little preview of it. They're nicely packaged. They have plenty of foam on them. We're not going to show you that, but we will show you what's in the box. When you open it up, you will have a wall mounting bracket. You'll have a cable for paralleling more than one of these. You have a user's manual, which gives you all the information you'll really need. It's very simple to hook up, but that'll help you. And it also has a spec sheet, which we found to be pretty nice. Uh, it's just a report, gives you all the specs that they came up with. And we did verify some of the information, which is easy to find in there. It's got the factory capacity of 104.1 amp hours. All right, and also we have a terminal covers and some screws to go into the terminals on the ends. Those are like M8 bolts, heavy duty, and a pack of bolts that go into what we suspect is going to be a concrete or block wall for mounting. You can also use this with heavy duty wood screws if you're putting it in just a regular stud wall or on some wood. All right, looking at the battery itself, this is the top down view. Of course, we do have it laying on its back, but we'll start from the bottom side and show you what's inside or what's gonna be, you're gonna be looking at for all your connections. All right, first we have the power button. Now the power button only energizes the BMS. We'll fire that up in a few minutes. The DC breaker energizes the battery. So right now it's in the off position, terminal are cold, the BMS is turned off. <clears throat> we have a light, which just indicates on off if the BMS is turned on or off. A reset button. You have your dip switches. If you're paralleling, putting more one of these in service and you're running parallels, you will set these to whatever's indicated in the book, the different positions, dry contacts, if you use those. They have an RS-485 and a CAN bus uh, port for inverters if they are so equipped to communicate with one of these. You got an RS-232 port if you want to hook it up to a PC and uh, use their software, which we do not have. We won't be demonstrating that today but you'll need to get the RS-232 cable from the Orient Power people when you order it. So we don't want to leave that out. You don't want to leave that out like we did. You have two RS-485 ports for paralleling more than one. These are parallel together, so you can use either one. doesn't matter. <clears throat> then you just have your regular terminals, positive, negative. These bolts are the ones that go inside here to so hook your battery terminals onto, battery lugs. We've already taken the screws off, by the way, so it's not magic. They're right there. There's screws up and down the top and the sides. And here's the inside view. Looks pretty basic. You can see your terminals. Your positives are uh, going to the most positive of the battery and also down to the circuit breaker, which is still in the off position. Circuit breaker runs through to the terminals and to the positive on the battery. Same thing on the negative. The negative, of course, hooks to the BMS and the most negative of the battery. Nothing we can really tell you about in here other than it looks fine, all the connections look good, the wires are nice and flexible, they're nice and tidy with the zip ties. All right, this is the protective cover underneath that we'll find the batteries. We've already taken out the four screws. We're just gonna lift this straight up. This is to protect, we're assuming to protect the top of the batteries. It's got a foam liner, but it does not touch anything, but we're happy with the foam liner. Anyway, all right, here's your batteries. This is a uh, 16 in series battery. So we have 16 cells, just one parallel, no, no parallels rather. And we have eight batteries on this side, eight batteries on this side. And as you can see, we were talking about the positive here, your most negative here. Just like you would set it up if you were doing a DIY build for yourself. Got some nice substantial bus bars doing all the connections. <clears throat> and what we followed down was we found the BMS leads, color coded, each going to a positive. And then also running down our four 
battery temperature sensors, two on each side. We didn't lift the bar up. This does come off here if you lift all this stuff up, which we're not going to lift up in this video. And check it out, but you can get your QR codes underneath here and go to the website and find out exactly what kind of cells they are. We're curious ourselves. We'll do that in the future. Uh, as you see, the bars that protect and hold the batteries in place, they have the appropriate cutout holes for the venting for the individual cells in case that were to happen, which you would hope it never does. But this keeps your pack nice and rigid. This thing's designed to be setting up. So your compression, you're going to have some slight compression from the top down on these batteries. Uh, we did notice that probably to help from any kind of rubbing with any expansion on the cells. In between these rows, we do find the uh, tape, uh, foam that usually they tape onto the sides. Each one we did check down, they all have the tape. We did notice that there's none along the side. Excuse me. There is along the side. It's not down the middle. So the sides have it. So we're protected along the sides from, you know, this metal, which I'm pretty sure this is non-conductive coating. And that's something we will have to remember to check next time. All right, so we're going to put this back together and we will fire the BMS up and show you what the display screen looks like. All right, back up top with the lid snapped on, we're going to run through the BMS menu. All right, push the button to fire it up. There we go. We get the capacity, we get the run light, nothing's turned on, so it should just kind of sit here and blink a little bit. All right, the menu is fairly straightforward. There's not a lot you can do on this menu. So we just go to this. If you go to system settings, you're not really going to get a whole lot, but we will take a look. That's the baud rate. That is for your connection when you're hooking up to a computer. Parameters, this will not let us do anything. Non-production, manufacturer cannot use but you can change parameters through the software. Analog information, enter. All right, so here we are, the pack voltage, 52.63. That's how it was shipped to us. And we will check out, let's check some of this stuff out here. Oh, nothing there. Temperature. Ah, uh, yes, the four temperature sensors. Celsius. The voltage. Cell voltage, let's see what we got here. Ah, oh, very nice information. All right, so we can see cells one, two, three, four. And we have the millivolts out here. 32.89, 32.9. Let's go to five through eight. Nine through 12. And 13 through 16. Escape. And we're back up here. Not a lot you can do, but if you do need to check the pack of voltage, uh, you can do that with this, and we would recommend using some kind of a shunt with a um, battery monitoring system of something a little bit more substantial than this. Gives you the basic information. You can go in there and watch it when you're charging. It is very interesting because you can see the cell imbalance. And we have two of these hooked up and running, and we did get initially about a 300 millivolt differential in the different cells but it's balancing and coming down. So I think we're down to about 270 millivolt difference over a few cycles. So it is dropping. We don't have the specs on how much the, uh, the capacity this BMS has to balance. And, you know, that's really about it. There's not a lot to them. They weigh uh, just a bit over 100 pounds. So they're kind of heavy if you're going to try to put it up by yourself. But if you do, if you want to lift it, you can struggle around to get it up on the wall and get on that mount. The mount is easy to use to hook it onto. Otherwise, we do have, uh, best we can tell you is we've had about three weeks of usage out of two of them. They're not hooked to an inverter that gives us any capability for communication, so they're just standalone units. They're not running in a parallel system, you know, the, with the cabling and anything. They're just each is running its own um, charge and discharge rate, running off of a bus bar. We'll try to get that to you soon to show you what that system setup looks like. It's pretty simplified, but they're staying fairly balanced right now. 
So the Orient Power 48100 PW seems to be a fairly decent power wall or pre-built battery. And if you have any comments or anything you'd like to ask, we will read the comments and see if we can answer some of the questions. And with that, we will uh, stop this and try to come back with more information on the Orient Power Powerwall in the future.